Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. Though many people think of submarines as a 20th century invention, these undersea vessels actually date back to the late 1700s. That said, the biggest advancement since that time was the introduction of nuclear reactors in the mid-1950s. At the time, nuclear fission was becoming more and more popular worldwide. With a nuclear reactor on board, submarines could patrol the seas for much longer intervals. avoid having precious space taken up by fuel, and forego many fire and air pollution risks. Today, nuclear submarines are not only the norm, but also among the most feared ships in the ocean. Life on a US submarine is not unlike serving aboard any other ship. Most time is spent actively working or sleeping. With only short periods dedicated to leisure time. Virginia class subs like the USS New Mexico, which is 377 feet long and 34 feet wide, offer bare minimum space for occupants. Though subs do have decks, most of the space is dedicated to missiles and other weapons. Entering through the top hatch, crew members enter a floatable chamber from which diving exercises are run. There are three levels in the New Mexico with crew quarters near the center of the middle deck. This area contains stacks of bunk beds, all of which contain personal safety equipment in case of emergency. Fire control is the main attack and defense center of the ship. The ship is controlled by a pilot and co-pilot sitting in the front of the same room. Most of the ship's aft portion is dedicated to engine rooms and ballast tanks. But there is also a special torpedo room near the front of the vessel on the lowest floor. This is where torpedoes like the Mark 48 are stored, loaded, and fired. One of the most important sections of the ship is the galley and mess hall. Here in this minimal space, a team of food service specialists must create and serve three meals a day to 130 crew members. Submarine kitchens are particularly innovative, not just because they lack space, but because all food needs to be prepared without the use of open flame. This means cooks can only rely on electrically heated flat tops and ovens to prepare their meals. Fortunately, these innovative men and women have been able to come up with a highly variable menu to keep their fellow crew members and officers fed. As they have to follow certain nutritional guidelines, these cooks must have access to regular supplies of fresh vegetables and meats, 
not just vacuum-packed rations. Two, four, three, two, one. Depending on each crew member's duty schedule, they will have six hours of work, six hours of watch, and six hours of free time per day. There are small recreation areas where they can play games and have a gym. Thanks to portable gaming systems, crew members can simulate many of the same comforts they might enjoy at home, even if they're in the middle of the open ocean. From the kitchen to the crew quarters to the engine room, one of the most important rules aboard any submarine is to avoid doing anything that might cause a fire. In fact, fires have proven to be the most common reason for casualties aboard a sub. And crews frequently train to learn how to prevent and address them. After all, since submarines are fully enclosed, there is no way for smoke and heat to escape into the atmosphere. This causes the smoke to rise and occupy the highest spot of the sub. Coincidentally, this is where nearly all of the control equipment sits. Fires can move so quickly from deck to deck because each level is not self-contained. Instead, they are designed to float between the sides of the ship. The U.S. Navy estimates that, even in the best of conditions, a fire could sweep through an entire submarine in under 30 minutes. For this reason, fire drills are more common than almost any other practice scenario on board. During a fire drill, Crew members must don a protective breathing apparatus to minimize smoke inhalation. Fire from the deep fat fryer. Raid for fire and general emergency. Control room personnel must monitor the fire spread and update all crew members via the PA system. Meanwhile, crew members must fight the fire using hoses spread around the ship. Once the fire is out, the crew will need to do a damage assessment and determine whether or not the submarine can continue on its mission. Firefighting takes on a completely different form on the ocean surface. For instance, aboard the Nimitz-class aircraft carrier USS George H.W. Bush, crew members participate in a general quarter fire drill. This routine training involves donning full fire suits with oxygen. Though the situation is not the same as on a submarine, aircraft carrier fires are just as dangerous. With many tight spaces, thousands of gallons of jet fuel, and all manner of explosive ordnance on board, even a small blaze must be considered a life or death situation. Firefighters are made up of personnel from all over the ship. Their job is to enter the affected area as a team and address the blaze at its source. 
Special lasers are often used to help firefighters see through the smoke and flames. It's not uncommon for the U.S. Navy to simulate these conditions and give the crew members a more realistic experience. Modern aircraft carriers are more like floating cities than traditional battleships. In fact, a Nimitz-class carrier like the USS George H.W. Bush is more than 1,000 feet long and boasts a complement of around 5,000 sailors and aviators. In order to give these men and women some of the comforts of home, these ships contain special stores where crew members can purchase snacks, energy drinks, and other items on an as-needed basis. These stores are essentially the same as any mini-mart one might find in their suburban neighborhood. They carry packeted snacks such as candies, chips, and goodies sitting alongside cigarettes, personal hygiene items, and over-the-counter medicine. Aboard the USS Carl Vinson, crew members have taken their desire for creature comforts even further by installing a premium Starbucks coffee shop. This gives sailors a break from soda and traditional coffee and allows them to enjoy flavored lattes, cappuccinos, and frozen drinks just as they would on land. It's worth noting that this coffee shop is the result of a collaboration between the Navy and the Seattle-based coffee maker. This ensures that all of the drinks made on board actually taste like the beverages these men and women might get at home. In fact, Starbucks even arranged for all the profits from the coffee sales to go back to the crew. Those serving aboard the Carl Vinson are convinced that perks like the ship store and coffee shop benefit their mental health and help them perform better in their daily duties. On an aircraft carrier, these duties can differ dramatically from person to person. In fact, the crew is split up between those who work and run the ship and those assigned to the air wing. Such as pilots, navigators, and maintenance men. These men and women must collaborate in countless ways throughout the day. But ultimately, they each have their own specific jobs and commanding officers to whom they answer. One of the most important jobs of all is working in what's known as the bubble. This is the nickname for the Integrated Catapult Control System. It's actually built into the surface of the ship, giving those inside an eye-level view of the flight deck. From here, specially trained crew members communicate simultaneously with the pilots tower, and deck crew members. This allows them to essentially control every aircraft launch and recovery to maximize safety and efficiency. And while not every job on the ship carries the same level of admiration, each of them is as important as the next when it comes to keeping the vessel and mission on course. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.